expert on this computer. Please know, teachers, that uh, student faces will not be part of this video. No um, participants who are zooming in, your faces will not be part of the recording. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a big day. It is the book release of our new book by Cindy William Schrauben. It is called, This Could Be You, Be Brave, Be True, Believe, Be You. And I'm so excited to introduce Cindy to you. But before I do so, I would also like to introduce Heather. You should be able to see Heather on the screen right now. Heather, will you wave to them, please? Excellent. And Heather is speaking a different language. She is speaking American Sign Language so that children who are tuning in, unable to hear the story, they can see her language and her movements and they can be able to still understand the story. Um, so we also have closed caption happening on the bottom as well. So we hope that we are able to include all of our participants today. I am the publisher here at Cardinal Rule Press and I am just thrilled to be able to see your faces supporting Cindy in this endeavor that was a dream of hers long, long ago. And I'm sure Cindy will share with you the special page that actually highlights herself as a child. Before we begin, I want to thank everyone who made this book possible. For example, Julia Seal, who is the illustrator, she's a very, very talented female artist and this book could not have come to life without her. Cardinal Rule Press authors and team members who are turning, tuning in. Making a book takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of time. And my favorite thing about this book is that it's going to inspire children all around the world to dream big. So without further ado, teachers, if students have questions, the chat is open to um, the facilitator, that's myself, Maria. So I will be able to get your questions all throughout the program and everyone is muted. So that's on purpose. All right, Cindy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much, Maria. I really appreciate it. I am so excited to be here with you. I see so many kids' faces out there and that's what this is all about today. And this will be the first time I'll be reading the book to kids. So you're the first ones that'll be able to hear the whole thing. And I'm so excited to have you. But I need your help a little bit. I'm going to be a little silly, but my book has a rocket on the front cover. And this is called a launch party. So we're going to launch off this little rocket. Will you count down with me? Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. There it went. Launch it off. Yay. Thank you for your help. Okay, are we ready to go? I am going to show you a couple of really important things about this book before we get started. This Could Be You has something really special hidden. This is called the book jacket. And behind the book jacket is a poster. It's hanging up back here. It's huge. Look how big it is. Every single book comes with a poster. And that's so exciting. So exciting for me. It was a surprise. Ms. Desmondi surprised me with that poster in the, in the cover of the book. There's one other thing I want to tell you about. And this is a thanks to Julia Seal, the wonderful lady that wrote Drew the Pictures. She lives all the way in England, so she's probably not here today because she might be sleeping right now. I'm not sure. But she had a great idea to have the end papers of the book. Do you know what the end papers are? It's the inside cover and the back inside cover. These are called the end papers. And look at these really close. These are pictures from real kids like you. Kids drew a picture to tell us what they would like to be when they grow up or what their dreams are. And right here, that's my grandson Will's picture. Hi, Will. And here's the front. Look at all these great pictures. And here's my grandson Jonah's picture. He wants to be a doctor. Hi, Jonah. So I wanted to show you that before I read because this book is all about dreams. Raise your hand if you have dreams. 
Do you have dreams? I'm looking. I can see. Oh, lots of hands. Lots of hands. That's great. Lots of big dreams. Writing a picture book was one of my big dreams. And it took me a long time to get there. And I had to work really hard. I wasn't good at it right away. But I kept working and I got better. And that's what this book is all about. It's called This Could Be You. Are you ready? There's one thing you have to help me with while I'm reading. At the end of every page, it says, it could be you. Can you say that with me? It could be you. All right. So when I, or not me, but my little bee friend points at you, it means it's your turn to say, it could be you with me. Ready? Okay, here we go. This could be you by Cindy Williams Schraben and illustrated by Julia Seal. Who pursues their top dreams? They're never ever stop dreams. Persist until they drop dreams. Believe it could be you. Did you help me? I didn't get my B up there high enough. Look at this girl. This is a picture that Julia Seal drew of her own family. They hiked all the way from this lake, all the way up to the top of this mountain. And this is her daughter and how proud she was after she worked hard because we can all do hard things, right? All right. What do you think this guy wants to be? Who displays explorer drive? And astronauts let soar drive. A faster, higher, more drive? Blast off. It could be you. How about this girl here? Who has keen design flair? An artist's time to shine flair. A sketch and then refine flair? Create, it could be you. Do you know what sketch and then refine means? Look at this. Do you think she was a beautiful artist right from the beginning? Did she make beautiful pictures the first time she tried? I don't think so, look here. There's a bunch of pieces of crumpled up paper, can you see? It looks like she had to try and try and try again to make that happen, but she did it. All right, look at these kids, they're on a race. Who inspires teamwork? And athletes go full steam work. The fight to reign supreme work? Play on, it could be you. Look at all their friends over there cheering them on. Who has dig by hand grit? A farmer's rain is grand grit. A please respect the land grit. Plow through. It could be you. He's digging in the dirt, isn't he? I wonder what he's planting. Who completes the long haul? A trucker's staying strong haul. A fixing what is wrong, huh? Roll on. It could be you. She's a truck driver, isn't she? That's her job. There's all kinds of jobs out there. Every single day I hear about a new job I never knew about. There's so many different things you can do. Look at this boy taking care of his mom or his sister or someone who's feeling sick. Who extends a care touch? A nurse is always there touch. A hopeful, don't despair touch. Support, it could be you. What does don't despair mean, you know? It means don't worry, right? Don't worry. Who observes with pro eyes? A scientist's go slow eyes. The always more to know eyes? Inspect, it could be you. He's checking out that B, isn't he? Scientists have to check out lots of stuff. Oh, look at this page. Goes this way. Look at these kids. Hmm, how do you think they're feeling? All different feelings, huh? Who maintains a brave face? A captain's never cave face. It's rough but ride the wave face. Jump in, it could be you. 
Are you helping me with the it could be you? I wish I could hear you. All right. Who selects the right words? And authors let's unite words. Intrigue, inform, incite words, compose. It could be you. Who knows what compose means? Do some of you know what compose means? To write or to put something together, right? All right, here's the page Mrs. Desmondi wanted me to show you. See that little girl there who's the author? The illustrator used this picture of me when I was a little girl to make that character. You think that looks like me? Pretty cool, huh? That was another surprise that Ms. Desmondi gave me. She gave me lots of good surprises. Who dares off the cuff feet? A firefighter's rough feet. The vow to do enough feet? Protect, it could be you. What do you think he wants to be? Firefighter, huh? Oh, I love this page. Look at all the color. What are these kids doing? They are really working together, aren't they? They're taping and gluing and painting and measuring to make that crazy contraption. That looks like so much fun. Who applies a try mind? And engineers ask why mind? And always aiming high mind? Invent, it could be you. These kids, they're helping to remind people to take care of the ocean, aren't they? Reminding people to not pollute and help the animals in the ocean. Who applauds a bold voice? A judge's truth be told voice. A right for young and old voice? Speak up, it could be you. What's going on here? These older kids are helping and the younger kids, aren't they? Who defines a kind view? A teacher's stretch your mind view. A no one left behind view? Instruct, it could be you. All right, who believes in your dreams? Courageous to the core dreams. The better than before dreams. Ready for a surprise? Guess what? That who is you. Look at the mirror. Can you see? I can see myself in it. You will be able to see yourself in the book too. <laughs> that was another surprise I got. These pages are for your teachers and your parents and all the other adults who want to help remind you that you can do big things, that you can do hard things. And these are some ways and some things they can do with you to help you get there. All right. Nice job. Thank you for helping me. Great job. All right, Ms. Desmondi, do you have any questions for me or would you like me to talk a little more first? Well, you know, first of all, I would like, I'm going to ask that everyone on the count of three, I want you to put your hands up and we are going to give Cindy a big round of applause for reading her book to the public for the first time. It's such a Yay. big deal, boys and girls, to be able to get your words into print and out into the world. So congratulations, oops. So Cindy, oh no, no, it can't be in video, can't be in video. So Cindy, what I would like you to do is I would like you to answer the first question, which is, do you have any advice for kids wanting to become an author? And this is coming from a classroom in New Jersey. Oh, I sure do. Writing a picture book took me a long time and I had to have lots of helpers. Have you ever done peer editing in your classrooms where you write a story and then your friends look at it and give you ideas and tell you what they think? Have you ever done that? 
Well, authors do that too. We call them critique partners. And I have lots of friends and I see some of them on here right now that have helped me with my stories. We write our stories and then read them for each other and give suggestions and give critiques and sometimes lots of praise. And at first it was kind of tough because when you first think you have a great story and you hear some critiques from other authors, <sighs> at first it's kind of hard to hear, right? Just like when you get your peer editing. When you do your peer editing, we shouldn't always say it's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's great, because it doesn't help much, right? Making mistakes and learning from those mistakes is the only way we can get better. Let me tell you a story. When I was in high school, my best friend we used to do our homework together. And he said, you're not a very good writer. I'm just going to fix this for you because it's, it's just not very good. And you know what? I let him do it. And that was not the right thing to do. What should I have done, do you think? I should have said, well, help me get better. Show me what I need to do so I can improve, right? So that's what I wish I had done. And instead, I just let him work for me. And I had kept that in my head for a long time. And I finally realized, you know what? I'm getting better because I'm working at it. So that's what you need to do. Keep pushing, keep getting help from your peer editors or your critique partners or your teachers, and it, you'll get better. I promise you will. That's fantastic. Um, we have a lot of who, what, where, when, why, and how questions. So the next question is from a second grade class in Pennsylvania. And um, I'm going to answer part of it for you, Cindy. The first part of it is if you were an author, what would you do instead? And the answer is that actually Cindy does a lot of other things as well as being an author. And that's what a lot of people, when you see someone who has a job, like in the story, the truck driver who has a job, that truck driver might also be a mom or she might also be a grandma. And so a lot of us authors and people who are out in the world working have many roles that they play. Um, Cindy, before this book came out, tell us uh, a couple of the jobs that you worked at. I've done a lot of different things because I like to try new things. That's just kind of the way I am. But I was a teacher. I taught some preschoolers and I taught kindergartners for a while. And I am a mom, most important job, and a grandma. And I also worked at a children's museum for a little while. But most of my jobs have been with kids because I just love kids. And I am so happy now that I can share my books with you. That's fantastic. There is another question, and I love this question. Who inspired the different things that could kids could be in the book? Did you know people who had those jobs or did you brainstorm them? That's a really good idea. Both. I know some people that have the jobs that are in the book. Um, my daughter's a teacher, so that's one of the jobs in the book. Um, I, my other daughter is in healthcare and my husband is in healthcare and there's a nurse in the book. So lots of the p jobs in the books, I know someone, but some of them I didn't. I don't really know uh, a truck driver, but we had a, a career day the other day and got to hear from one. There are so many different jobs out there, but brainstorming is one of my favorite parts of writing a book. I love to brainstorm and get ideas. Oh, this is, this next question is going to be a hard one. Are you ready? Uh -oh. I'm ready. I'm uh, ready. This always stumps the authors when this question comes in. Here we go. Okay. How long did it take you to write the book? So I'm going to break it down. How long did it take you to draft and okay. edit and revise approximately? And then how long did it take you to get a publishing deal? And finally, the process of signing that contract to the book being in the world. You got that? <laughs> I got it. Okay. This book came out much easier than a lot of the books I've written because it doesn't have a plot, right? Or a storyline. It's more of a poem picture book. And for me, that's easier. I struggle just a little bit with the plotting sometimes. And some of my critique partners I see on here will know that. So probably actually doing the writing of the first draft 
probably just a couple of days or so. But then I sent it to a lot of my friends who are watching. And those are my critique partners, right? So they're like my peer editors, like you have your friends. And they gave me all kinds of ideas on what might Im be improved or what they do did think that worked. And that probably went on for a few months, several months, maybe a year. And then after that, I sent my story to Ms. Desmondi and she offered to publish it. And then after the publishing process, it was about a year, right, Ms. Desmondi? It was just about a year ago this time yeah. that we made the deal. So yeah. all in all, a couple of years at least. Fantastic. Marielle would like to know, when you are not reading and writing, what is it that you like to do? I like to hang out with my family. That's my favorite thing. I love to read. I love to go to the lake, hang out at the lake and be outside. Uh, when I'm at home, I'm usually inside behind my computer writing and reading. But um, in the summertime, getting out and hanging out at the lake with my family, that's my favorite thing and my friends. Fantastic. Zach would like to know if you play any sports. I don't, although when I was a, a little girl, I did. I loved to play softball when I was a little girl. I was kind of a tomboy. I was the oldest and my brother didn't come along for uh, six years. I was six when he was born. So until then, I was kind of my dad's sidekick and I did a lot of, did a lot of sports and hung out at the ball field a lot with him. And I should say that Zach is one of the junior illustrators. So that question came from Zach, who's one of the- Yay, Zach. The thank you. I want to thank all those junior illustrators <laughs> for, for all their work. Um, another question is, let's see, what will your next book be? We're going to take just a few more questions here before we wrap up. That's hard to say. I have several books that are that are um, out there right now. My agent has sent them off to some other publishers like Ms. Desmondi to see um, what they might like. Some of them are poem picture books like this, and some of them are stories. And usually my stories are kind of silly and quirky. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, this next question, I'll go ahead and answer it, Cindy. Um, the question is- Good. How did the illustrator get paired up with this project? So typically we do not hire our illustrators until we've selected the manuscript, the actual book, because we want to talk to the author. That's what we do here at Cardinal Real Press is we talk to the author and we get an idea of what they're feeling, what they're thinking about as far as the characters and the culture of the book. And then what we do is we start searching for the perfect match. Um, so teachers and students, I know you talk about just write books in the classroom. So you may pick up a really big chapter book and you may look through the pages, but it's really hard for you to read all the words. So that's probably not a just write book for you. So it's similar on how we find our illustrators is we're looking for a just write illustrator for each different book. Adriana wanted to know what page you, Cindy, like the most in the book and can you show it to us? Oh boy, let me think. It, that's a really that's a really tough one. But you know, I think that I would have to say that my favorite page is this one. I just love these kids and how they're working together and coming up with one project that they were able to do all together. And I love the colors. When you talk about the just right illustrator. Ms. Desmondi definitely found the Just Right Illustrator for me. Yeah, you should definitely check out other books illustrated. And she writes as well by Julia Seal. She mm -hmm. has some really beautiful um, titles. All right, so let me get one more question here. Um, I think you might have answered this about your inspiration to write this book, but maybe let's talk a little bit about the growth mindset and how it connects yeah. to this book. Because I know that was a really big, important piece for you in writing this. The biggest inspiration was my grandsons and wanting to help them and other kids to think a little differently about 
their abilities. And the growth mindset tells us that just because you might not be the star soccer player doesn't mean, number one, you can have fun with it. And number two, you can get better and you can keep working at it. So the back pages, the back matter in the end was really important to me because it helps us adults to tweak our language just a little bit. And when, if kids grow up hearing things, for instance, instead of saying, I can't, they learn to say, I can't yet, but I'm still trying. And if they grow up with those ideas, I think it really helps them to think that way and to remember to keep pushing and keep trying. That's fantastic. We have so many positive comments from your family and friends in the in the chat, Cindy, and from your colleagues hey. and just saying, great job, Cindy. Congratulations. If anyone, Thanks, is, everyone. yes, if anyone is in or near Michigan, um, Cindy has a lot of events scheduled here in Michigan, and we will include those in a follow-up email that goes out to everyone who participated today. And since you heard the story, we would love to hear your feedback, and we would love to hear what you thought as well. Um, without further ado, do you have anything else, Cindy, that you would like to share before we sign off today? I don't. Just thank you all for being here and making this an exciting time for me to read my book for the first time. And thanks again to those junior illustrators, to Ms. Desmondi, and to Julia Seal. Oh, absolutely. And for those of you tuning in, we just want to remind you the importance of reading to children and gaining, giving access to children. So any way that you can get books off your shelves and into the hands of children, we hope that you can do so. Thank you, everyone. Absolutely. Have a great day. Happy Friday. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Dream big. That's right. <laughs>